Fannie Lou Hamer is best known as a civil rights pioneer. She was a field organizer for the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, where she registered Black people to vote and are native of Sunflower County. She led the delegation of the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party, which challenged the all-white state delegation to the 1964 Democratic Convention. Less known is her economic development work, of which the highlight was the Freedom Farm. Her own life experience led her to prioritize ending poverty and developing assets in the Black community in her Mississippi County. Hamer, the youngest of 20 children of sharecropper parents on a cotton plantation, she picked cotton starting at the age of six when the plantation owner offered her goods from his store to lure her into debt, which she never got free of. She left school after the sixth grade. Her parents saved enough money to rent land and buy animals and equipment to farm independently, but someone poisoned their animals and they were forced to return to the plantation. Very few African-Americans owned land in Sunflower County, Mississippi. Only 21 of 31,000 families in 1967. The median black income in the Mississippi Delta was $456 a year. Malnutrition and even starvation were common. By the end of the 60s, 32% of the blacks were on public assistance. 12.6% were unemployed. Families averaged 5.69 members. Residents received on average only a sixth grade education and 70% of homes were dilapidated and 60% lacked plumbing. Hamer had an idea for the farm in 1969 after hearing of the death of her neighbor's 18 year old son, who was so malnourished that he was never able to walk through fundraising and generous contributions. Hamer purchased 40 acres of land with an eight thousand dollar down payment. She then set up a pig bank with the help of the National Council of Negro Women, which donated 50 pigs. The bank loaned pregnant pigs to poor families who could keep the dividends in the form of piglets and in return the original pig to the bank. When the first pigs from their litter began became pregnant, the family would donate them to another family. By 1973, 300 families had almost 3,000 new pigs. Everywhere Hamer went, she would ask for donations for the Freedom Farm. In Chicago, 176,000 white high school students marched against hunger to raise money for the farm. Eventually, 5,000 people participated in growing their own food through the co-op. The Freedom Farm also helped 35 local families living in shacks with down payments on FHA financed home purchases. They helped people fill out the FHA applications for a total of 800,000 in loans. In 1971, there were 33 plots of land totaling 100, excuse me, 1,940 acres owned by blacks in the county with the Freedom Farm comprising 33% of the land owned by blacks in the area. And by 1972, they had built 70 affordable homes. They built the streets and laid down water and sewer pipes and electrical and gas lines. Hamer and her family were one of the families who got a home through the housing co-op. Hamer would frequently overhear her neighbors speak about the benefits of their own houses. You'll see two men walking out their front doors. One would could one will kind of stop, look around and say, phew, I didn't realize how cold it was outside. Every place they ever lived in before, it was always just as cold inside as it was outside. Sadly, the Freedom Farm was sold in 1974 to its creditors. Fannie Lou Hamer strived hard to bring economic well-being to many living in Mississippi Delta. L.C. Dorsey, who ran the North Boulevard County Farm Cooperative, remembered Hamer's compassionate nature and said that when she'd wake up in the morning, there'd be people with problems. And in the evening, when she'd come home, they'd be there with their problems. She just tried to address those problems. 
When Hamer died of cancer in 1977, she was buried at the site of the Freedom Farm.